Twenty minutes passed before the two riders rode into the ranch house's dirt yard. Johnny Cross sat on a crude three-legged stool that had been salvaged from inside the ranch house. He was positioned in a patch of shade in front of the structure, sitting with his back against the stone wall to the right of the empty doorframe. Nearby stood a wooden barrel filled with stream water. A rusty iron dipper was secured by a rawhide thong to a nail in the barrel's upper rim. Luke was nowhere in sight. The newcomers and their mounts were covered with trail dust from what must have been a long, hard ride. They looked tough, hard-bitten. Nothing unusual about that. Most of the folk of Hangtree County were hard-bitten types. If they weren't, they usually didn't last long. Sometimes they didn't last long if they were, either. One was 30, red-headed, with the same colored mustache and long, narrow green eyes. He wore a black hat, black leather vest, and a low-slung gun on his left hip. The other had a thick head of oily black hair and blue-black beard stubble. A handsome man in an overblown way, whose looks were spoiled by narrow eyes and a tight, mean mouth. He wore a round-topped, flat-brimmed hat and a red bandana. His dark, fancy-patterned shirt would have been more at home in a gambling hall than out on the range. He wore his two guns tied down, gunfighter style. Johnny rose, standing up to face the newcomers as they reined in, hands resting easily at his sides, not far from his twin holstered guns. His manner was calm, untroubled. The redhead's dirty face was split by a broad, wide-toothed grin. His partner scowled like he was sucking on a lemon. Howdy! What can I do you for? The dark-haired man frowned. Who are you? Seeing as how you're on my land, I'm the one who should be asking you that. Who are you? You loco or something? He must be new to the outfit. Yeah? Well, he ain't gonna get much older if you don't learn some manners. Easy, Reese. Nobody tells me what to do, Red, not even you. And especially not some punk kid. Reese looked around, his scowl deepening. Where's Monty and the rest of the boys? Y'all friends of Monty? We're with the outfit. I'm Dan Oxblood, and this here's Reese Kimbrough. Kimbrough? You the one they call Keller Kimbrough? <laughs> Looks like some sense is starting to sink into that thick skull of yours, and not a moment too soon. I reckon the name Killer Kimbrough means something even to a snot nose like you. Nope. Kimbrough's thick black brows knitted together in a furious frown. His hand hung poised above the gun on his right hip. You just bought the farm, sonny. You got your guns on. Go for them. Whoa now, Reese. Shut up, Red. This is between me and the kid. Not hardly. Take a look at that set of double barrels peeking at us from the corner of that window. Shucks! Now you went and spoiled my surprise. Luke stood inside the ranch house at the window to the left of the door frame, sheltered behind the wall, holding a double-barreled shotgun that rested on the lower corner of the windowsill so the big holes of the twin bores covered the two horsemen. Kimbrough's face paled beneath its tan, going sallow. His hand drifted away from his gun, moving well clear of it. Hush up, Reese. Let me do the talking. Maybe we can get out of this without getting our heads blowed off. Dan Oxblood turned his face toward Johnny. You seem like a sensible enough fellow. We ain't looking for trouble. What are you looking for? Some Jaspers we know were camped out this way. We came by to pay them a visit. Social call, you might say. Monty and friends? That's right. They around? Not anymore. They done moved on. Where to? Johnny shrugged. When are they coming back? <laughs> Not in this lifetime. So that's the way of it, huh? Looks like we made this trip for nothing. We'll be riding out, then. You do that. Hope your friend with the scatter gun ain't got no itchy trigger finger. Oh, he won't shoot at nothing less than he's got a mind to. Ain't that right, Luke? That's right. He's a peace-loving type. Me too. Fine, that's fine. All right if we go now? Yep. Well, that's fine. And by the way, I don't believe I caught your name. Cross. Johnny Cross. I heard tell of a fella named of Cross who rode with Cullen Baker down East Texas way a while back. Cullen, Bill Longley, and some other good old boys. Any relation? Could be. Fast crowd. Man, have to be pretty quick to keep up with that bunch. I like Hangtree better. It's nice and quiet. You think so? Well, maybe. You seem like you got some sense, Red. I try. This here's Crossland. 
It's been crossland for a long time, and that's how it's going to stay. You might spread the word around. I'll do that. Well, that's fine. Y'all can go now. We're on our way. Breeze didn't feel quite so amiable. Next time we meet, kid, it'll be even up. You won't always have a shotgun covering you. <laughs> if that's all that's bothering you, climb down off that horse and we'll settle it now. Just you and me. No thanks. I'll pick my own time and place. No time like now. Kimbrough sneered. Betting against a pat hand is a sucker play. I'll wait till my deal comes around. Red turned his horse's head away from the ranch house, toward the south. You do what you want, Reese. I'm riding out. He touched spurs to the horse's flanks and started away, the animal moving at an easy lope. You talk big, Sonny. Got enough sand to keep from shooting the men in the back? The last thing you'll ever see is me looking you straight in the eye. Until next time, then. See you soon. He turned his horse and started after Red, who'd already put some distance between himself and the ranch house. Johnny stood there, watching the two of them ride away. Luke came out of the ranch house and joined him. Why didn't we clean up on them two when we had the chance? Nah, it's a hot day. I didn't feel like getting rid of any bodies this afternoon. Well, that Kimbrough's got a nice fat reward on him. Now you tell me. Well, he'll be back. We'll bag him yet. Just so he don't bag us. Kimbrough? I heard of him, sure. I made like I hadn't to rile him up. But it's the other one, Red, who's the dangerous one in that combination. Well, who's he? Dan Oxblood, from west of the Pecos, a real hellbender. He knows some people I know. Did some gun work with Cullen Baker down in the Bosque, East Texas country. Moved on before I came along, so I never met him. Cullen spoke well of him, though, and he don't have much good to say about most folks. Red and Kimbrough angled west, entering the pass to Wild Horse Gulch. What'll you bet they're heading down to Buffalo Hump, Luke? To that hideout in Ghost Valley. No, no bet. Dan Oxblood, Kimbro, a couple of high-powered gunhawks to be hunkered down in the brakes. I wonder who else is part of that outfit Red spoke of, and what they're up to out there. Knowing you, Johnny, I'm sure we'll find out the hard way. You made Kimbro look small. He'll be back, and he won't be alone. He'll get what money and his pards got. I'm through drifting. Nobody's bullying me off my land. Of course, that don't mean we can't make a strategic retreat. Let's herd most of the horses to the Upland Park, where they'll be safe out of sight. Then we go into town tonight. We'll pick up some information and see which way the wind's blowing. Hot damn! That ain't all I'm gonna pick up. You know how long it's been since I had me a woman? Judging by the steam coming out of your ears, I'd say too long. <laughs>